All right, if you are currently watching the live stream, I'm going to start the live stream at 5. The reason I've started a little bit earlier is to give uh, you a chance to jump in there if you want to, and also to make sure the darn thing works, because i got to tell you, there's been a few times I've done this and discovered that it didn't work. So I'm hoping it works. If you happen to be looking at it and you're hearing my voice, then please chime in and say, yes, Joel, it works. Otherwise, I'm going to wonder. But we will get started at at uh, 6 o'clock, rather, which is, uh, what, four minutes, roughly, and change, three and a half minutes, okay? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, DFox. Now I know it's working. Hang in there, brother. We will be, uh, or sister, as the case might be, and we'll get started at 6 o'clock. Got a bunch of stuff for you, and then I'll answer a bunch of questions uh, that folks might want me to answer. Stand by. Once again, if you just uh, just join me, um, I'm going to get started at 6 o'clock. I just got the stream going early to make sure that it's functioning. Looks like it is. Hang in there. I'm just rustling through some papers here and trying to get some, figure out my name and, and uh, like that. And we'll get it going at 6 o'clock. i got a lot to talk about today. So hang in there. And uh, we only got about a minute and a half to go. Unit 6. Unelad. Get ready for certified USDA. That's what happens when you are your own music guy. You end up hitting the wrong button half the time. Maybe it's because I was reading, wearing my reading glasses or something. I don't know. All right, hang on a second. We're going to get going here in just a second. In the meantime, i got some stuff i got to shuffle through here and figure out what my name is. Thank you very much for joining me today, by the way. I'm really grateful. And yes, I am old, and so I do need my spectacles periodically. So I'll put those there. And uh, get started with this just about now. Okay. Hi, I'm the Gun Guy, obviously. Uh, I hope you know that you're on my live stream. <laughs> That'd be kind of strange. Looks like we got some people here, which is really good. Thank you very much. My goodness, got a whole bunch of folks here. So what I'm going to do is just go over some things with you real quick, and then I'll go through and look for questions and comments that folks would like me to address. 
and I will be happy to do that. So not a problem. But uh, there is there are a couple of housekeeping items, just where Gun Guy TV is concerned, that I want to go through, which I generally don't address people's comments uh, on the channel. I just I just don't do it. I mean, I, I respond to them if I can. I mean, time and space and place, you know, we're just, I'm not a, um, a financially wealthy person in American, by American standards. I'm not a poor guy. I'm not a rich guy. I'm a middle class guy. And so my wife and I both work. And then uh, Gun Guy TV for me is more of a labor of love than anything else. I don't, uh, I'm not trying to make a living out of it. And if I did, I'd be poorer than a church mouse. I can tell you that right now. Uh, so as a result, I don't always have as much time to dedicate to respond to comments as I'd like. People do send me emails peri periodically, and I, I try to always respond to those. Although it can take me a day or so because I, I do get, well, depending on the day, I might get uh, anywhere from 30 to 100 emails for business. And so I have to kind of respond to those as well. But I did get a couple of comments recently that I thought were entertaining. One of which was a guy who commented, and I, 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 God, I got a case of the stupids, and I didn't print it out. I should have done it. But I, let me paraphrase it for you. It was basically this. Why the blankety-blank, blank, blankety-blank, blank, don't my blankety-blank, blank comments ever blankety-blank show up? <laughs> okay, it was so over the top with profanity that I got a kick out of it. All right, well, here's why. Because I'm a Christian, and I don't swear on the show, and this is a family-oriented program. I want people to be able to watch this program with their kids and not worry about profanity all over the place, so I don't allow it on the show. And as a result, since YouTube in particular allows me to filter that out, I do. So if you commented that way on YouTube, it was YouTube's filter that filtered you out. I didn't go seek and destroy your comment. It just, you know, so next time you comment, just leave the profanity out, and your comment will show up. It's not a problem. All right, the other one I got the other day was I, you know, because I'm sick, I'm, I'm still pretty sick. I posted a little short video sitting on the couch uh, in my living room and notified you that I've been sick for about a week and a half and I'm still sick and that I'm going to be a little slow to crank out videos as a result. So I got one comment from a guy who started out by insulting me with a very profane insult and then said, what's wrong with you? To, I mean, essentially what he said is he called me a name and he said, what's wrong with you? Wear a mask. Wear a surgical mask. Otherwise, you could give me that. Now, I, apparently, he was under the impression that by watching my video, because I'm sick, if I was not wearing a surgical mask, that somehow, some way, I was going to transfer that virus to him through the video. I'll just let that sink in for a moment. Okay, so nevertheless, his comment didn't stick around either because it was uh, had profanity in it. But uh, just in case that individual is, wa is watching, I don't want to in any way freak out anyone. I do try very hard to, you know, meet as many expectations as I, I can. I'm not going to wear the mask, but I did get one just for this live stream. So if I have to cough during the live stream, which is entirely likely because I'm very sick, just for you, so that in case you're watching, so that you know you cannot possibly get my flu through the video, I will, I will cover myself up with the mask and cough. The things you have to do when you have a YouTube channel. All right, on to more serious things. There's some really encouraging stuff happening in the news. I don't know if you had a chance today or recently to look at a story. Oh, I, the other thing I should tell you is this morning I had a great interview with Dan O'Kelly. Dan O'Kelly uh, has a website called gunlearn.com. I've known Dan for quite some time now. Uh, I met him actually when I was appearing on the Leo Roundtable, which is a really neat YouTube channel for law enforcement folks, and they asked me to be a guest. I was the worst guest in the world, but it was very nice of them to ask me to come on the show a few times. And then when they realized I'm a terrible guest, they finally stopped asking me. I can't say as I blame them. But Dan is an expert. He was a supervisory special agent at the ATF, and he's the subject or part of the subject of this article, which appeared in CNN's, uh, on CNN's website, and they've written a previous one about him as well. So I called him or sent him an email or something. I don't know, one way or the other, we connected. And I asked him to come on the show. So he did this morning. We had a great conversation. He enlightened me a lot. And that, I have to just go through it and clean up the audio and like that. And we'll be uh, posting that for you. I'm going to say probably, what's today? Today's Tuesday, so probably Thursday. If I can get it out tomorrow, I will. But for sure on Thursday, you'll see that posted. It'll be posted all over the place. I encourage you to look at that. That is a great interview. All right, a couple of positive things here. This is one that I saw on The Truth About Guns today. I loved the headline, Hundreds of Gun Rights Supporters Spoil Bloomberg Campaign's 
Arlington, Virginia gun control rally. All right, why did I love it? Well, I loved it so much because I keep hoping that in California we'll be able to do similar things, and I believe that we can. Now, before I go any further about that, let me show you the brief little news clip from a, a, a Fox, I think it's a Fox station, I could be wrong, that covered this so you can see all the people that were out there. Here you go. Reporting out to New Hampshire, the candidates head to Nevada for their caucuses on February 22nd. All right, new tonight as the presidential candidates gear up for New Hampshire, one contender is trying to drum up support in our area. The campaign of former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg held an event in Arlington. Bloomberg wasn't there, but D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser was. She recently endorsed him for president. But outside, gun rights activists protested. We will not comply! We will not comply! We will not comply! We will not comply. Bloomberg has long advocated for stronger gun control. Friday, a bill banning the sale of assault-style weapons passed a Virginia House committee. President Trump hosted... Okay, now you saw the paltry number of people that were in the room. Look at how many people showed up outside to protest Mini Mike. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So I wanted to show you that just in case you didn't see it on Truth About Guns. All right, one more, and that is a subject I want to cover with you briefly just to talk about, and that is Arizona. As you may or may not know, I go to Yuma quite frequently to review firearms because I have a, a very good relationship with Richard Sprague, who's the owner of Sprague Sports in Yuma, and Richard is a terrific guy. He's kind enough to allow firearms manufacturers to ship guns there that can't be shipped to California, and Arizona, at least at the moment, is a free state. Okay, now this is a, and I hope you'll forgive me, and then again, once I get through my little things here, I'll look at uh, comments and questions and respond to all of them that I can in the time remaining. So I'll make sure that I, I get through them for you. So please be patient with me here. I want to address with you something as family, I think, as the family of gun owners and Second Amendment folks, we have to be honest with each other. So I have been hearing since I started Gun Guy TV with my son, I, golly, I think five years ago, which is shocking when I think about it. I have heard every day, just move, get out, move. I've heard people from other states say, well, I moved. I moved to state X, whatever that is. Never mind my phone in the background. I moved to state X, whatever that is, and I'm, I live in a free state. And while you jokers are stuck with whatever you're stuck with in California, and during that entire time, I've had Sam Paredes from Gun Owners of California, and I've had Rick Travis from CRPA on the on the show. I've had uh, people from uh, Gun Owners of America. I've had uh, folks. I mean, had folks from all different kinds of organizations. Universally, they have urged people not to move, but instead to fight the battle where it is. And so that's what I've done. I've stayed in California and fought the battle where it is. Here's the reason for that, is that the battle follows you wherever you go. When you move, you've essentially done nothing more than given yourself a momentary reprieve from the fight. It's going to come back and haunt you again. Now, look, there's many reasons why folks move, so please don't take this as criticism of people moving. If you move, you move. People move because of jobs. People move because of family. People move because they just don't like living in the city and they'd like to live in a rural area. People move for lots of reasons, and on top of that, maybe, one of them might be, gee, I want to be able to exercise my Second Amendment rights uninhibited by crazy, whack-job, anti-gun liberals like California governments. I get it. But if the main reason you moved was to avoid the battle, then I'm going to tell you it's going to find you. You're, you're finding it uh, infiltrating other states. Now, the, the universal comment is going to be, well, that's because all those crazy Californians moved to my state and they're ruining my state. Well, yeah. I mean, they're also moving there from New York and Maryland and other high-tax, heavily regulated places. That, as I've said many, many times on this program, that is what happened to California. That's how California got the way it was. When I was a kid, there were, and I think in San Diego County, there were less than a million people in the entire county. In fact, I think there were less than 750,000. It was a small town, had a small town feel to it. It wasn't a small town, but it had a small city, small town feel to it. And up in the area of Encinitas and around in there in Carlsbad, where there's some incredibly expensive homes, nobody wanted to live there because it was all flower growers and avocado groves and citrus groves and that kind of stuff. 
And I remember taking a field trip there when I was in sixth grade that took forever to get there, it seemed like. And I remember the bus driver remarking to the teacher that I had at the time saying, why would anybody want to live up here? It's nothing but farms. So the world has changed a lot in that span of time. Back then, we used to have commercials in San Diego on radio and television that said, thank you for visiting San Diego. Now, please go home. Don't move here. Well, guess what happened? People moved here from other places that were high tax and heavily regulated. They moved to California and turned it into what they left. Well, that's what they're doing now. They're leaving California and other areas and turning it into what they left. All right, now why have I droned on about this that long? Because of this story, again, I was you know, looking around truth, around truth about guns, so let me show you this one too. This story which appeared today, or maybe it was yesterday, in Truth About Guns, Arizona assault weapon ban bill is a doozy. The assault weapon ban bill is a doozy. All right, let me put on my, my uh, handy-dandy spectacles here if I can do it. I need to have the... Uh, Actually, I don't think I need the headphones anymore because I don't have to hear the cues from the, from the video, so I can take them off in a second. But let me get my, my spectacles on. Here's what this part of what it says here. In this bill that has been proposed, now I think this is the second time, and they've made it worse the second time around, all semi-automatic firearms that take detachable magazines would become assault weapons, quote-unquote. This is in Arizona. And almost all rifles with fixed magazines of greater than 10-round capacity that would include your 22 plinker. That latter part is because of the second notable aspect of the bill, the ban on large capacity magazines and the definition of those magazines. So here's how this bill defines those magazines in Arizona. This is going to sound a lot like California and New York to you. Here's one definition. Large capacity magazines means any magazine, any, I'm sorry, any ammunition feeding device with the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds but does not include any of the following. A feeding device that has been permanently altered so that it cannot accommodate more than 10 rounds, a 22 caliber tube fed uh, feeding device, or a tubular magazine that is contained in a lever action firearm. That's, that's very similar to the state in which I live. So this stuff, which people have run away to get away from, is following them wherever they go. It's happening in Texas. I don't know how many people have said, I live in the free state of Texas. Well, God bless Texas. I hope God does bless Texas. He has. I hope he continues to do so. I love Texas. I love Arizona, honestly. But I'm watching them both be turned into California right before my very eyes. And I think you are too. This is a, so this is an issue. Here's my, here's my suggestion. If you live in California, uh, don't move. Stay and fight the battle because it's going to follow you if you move anyway. If you move, let it be for a combination of reasons, not simply because of the Second Amendment. Let it be because it's cheaper to live elsewhere or whatever. Then that's a great reason to move. But if you're moving to get away from the Second Amendment battle, you're not going to escape the Second Amendment battle. And if you think you are, then you're not paying attention. Wherever you go, it's going to find you. We have to fight the battle where we are. All right, last thing, and then I'll get to the comments. Uh, just the other day, so this is just something I don't, I want your comments on this because I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know whether this is YouTube not featuring these videos because they don't want the information out or not, or people not clicking the bell when they subscribe so they're not getting notified or whatever. But here's, here's an interesting report. This is a little, you know, behind the scenes sort of inside baseball thing for you. Here's a report on two recent videos I did. Now, I'm hoping that you can actually see it. There is the video on top. That's the one that I explained I was sick and uh, that I told you that, gee, I'm, I'm going to be out. I'm going to be a little bit slow on producing things because I've got the flu. And no, several people have asked, do you have the coronavirus? No, I, you know, if I, I don't drink Corona, and that's why. My favorite Mexican beer is Bohemia. Sorry about that. <laughs> and I don't drink a lot of beer, so there you are. Okay, but anyway, just a joke. But no, I don't have the coronavirus. I actually have the flu, and so does, so does my son, and we're, we're on the healing end of it. But notice the view count on the very right of that video. You'll see, I think it says 4707 or something like that. I, I took my glasses off. And then, uh, in fact, I'll highlight it for you so you know where you're looking. Here you go. So inside the circle there, you'll see that I published it on the 10th, which was yesterday, and it's gotten 4,707 views. And that's just a little video of me explaining that I'm sick. Now, look at the video below it. I'll circle that one. That is the interview that I did with my son and Rick Travis from CRPA while at SHOT Show. Now, during that interview, 
Rick went into great detail and in, gave us incredible information he has never given me before for lack of time and shared so much about what is happening in California, why things are happening the way they're happening, what CRPA is doing, what the battle that NRA is going through right now, and it's it's having funding problems to fund things, what that is causing for CRPA, gun owners of California, and other groups, and why they're trying to solve those problems and what those problems are. He went through all of that, and look how many views it has. Less than half of the other video. All right, so I I need your input where this is concerned because I don't want to come across as negative, but it it does concern me that it could be YouTube not putting the video out there. It could be that the video is an hour long and or roughly and people don't want to sit through an hour long video. It's not a video anyway, it's an audio podcast, it's just a video version. And so most folks, I think, with the video, they just start it and listen to it because that's what you do. It just has a thumbnail there, so it's something to look at if you want to. I'm trying to figure that out because my, what's important to me at this point is to get the information out there. So we're busting our hump. I, I'm busting mine trying to get the information out there so people know what it is and they can respond to it. And they can, they can take the fight to the politicians where the fight needs to be taken. We can show up at rallies like they did in Virginia and outnumber the folks that are rooting for Bloomberg or whatever we need to do. That's the stuff that I'm trying to do here is be a conduit of information for you, in addition to doing the things that a lot of people do, which is, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of uh, gun reviews and that kind of stuff. So what are your thoughts on that? And when you're looking at that, the thing popped up and said, warning, the stream's current bit rate is slower than the recommended bit rate. Okay, well, I nothing I can do about that. Uh, so it is what it is. Hopefully it's coming through. So I'm going to look at your comments now and see if I can figure out... Um, here we go. Okay, so here's a couple. Uh, my bell is okay. <laughs> Why does that that song ring my bell? No, you never. I'll never sing again on the show. I promise. Uh, YouTube is scalping credits. I'm yeah. I'm hearing yeah. Probably so. Okay, so let me. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and see if I can get all the folks who commented before, and see if there's any questions here, and then I'll work through them. Forgive me. It may take me a second. I'm all by myself. Um, uh, loading 30 round magazines because I don't live in California. I love it. Uh, way to go. That's knee knock. I don't know how to say the last part. Frampini, it looks like. Uh, let's see. Humboldt County, beautiful part of the state. A lot of, a lot of uh, tall trees up in that area. Let's see. Uh, you hate the fact that good people live in California. Well, you know, oddly enough, a lot of good people live in California. And, and, uh, they are, uh, they are stellar people. We have really good people. I mean, my neighbors are phenomenal. And there's a lot of gun people, a lot of people who live in California who support the Second Amendment. Unfortunately, a lot of them leave. And the ones that are left behind don't feel like they have much of a voice anymore, so they don't exercise their voice. That's something that Rick talked about, is they don't really need money from people. They just need an hour of their time once a month, and that would turn the tide. They don't need hours and hours. They just need one hour of people's time to donate and help once a month. And that would help tremendously because if you've got a thousand people donating one hour, that's a thousand hours. And that would be incredible. You want to, you want to, you want to defeat Bloomberg's money. That's how we do it. And that's one of the things that Rick talked about in that, in that, uh, interview. So I urge you to look for that interview. It's the video, uh, what is two before this one, I guess. Um, it, it was an interview I did with him at SHOT Show. And by the way, there's another one coming out on the 20th, which is an interview we did with Rick Travis from CRPA, Sam Paredes, and Chuck Michelle, who's, golly, that dude is smart. And he's the president of CRPA, and he's also a Cracker Jack firearms attorney. And they were all there with us at SHOT Show. We spoke to them all at the same time. So that interview is coming up soon. I, I urge you not to miss that one because Chuck spelled out a lot of stuff that's legalese stuff, but he did it in English. So <laughs> even a bonehead like me could actually understand it. So I was very grateful for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're all sick. Yeah, I bet. Let's see. Uh, well, I'm kind of throwing, scrolling through here. If I miss yours, please forgive me. I'm getting a little old. I'm a little sick. And I think I got one brain cell that's actually firing at this time of night at this point. Arizona is going to become blue with California residents. Well, I think they're not just from California. A lot of snowbirds, too, are moving to Arizona because they like the weather just the same as they did California. What they like about Arizona now is the freedom and the lack of taxes and so on. Then when they get there, they make it into California or wherever they came from. Uh, yeah, everybody talks about trying to split California, and it's never going to happen. 
Uh, I know it sounds good like that, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's never going to happen. It requires so much that the hurdles are so high. Uh, I don't see that as even a viable thing to, to, uh, to wish for. Uh, we got to fight the battle rather than trying to find an, an escape hatch. There is no escape hatch. There's no escape hatch from fighting the battle for our rights. There isn't one. So I just urge you, stop looking for an escape hatch. There isn't one. Let's fight the battle, shall we? And if we stick together and work together to do that, we'll be able to do it. Look at what they're doing in Virginia. I think it's awesome. Okay, um, I'm not seeing... If the, if the U.S. becomes California, then I wouldn't be surprised if the bill gets completed. Uh, yeah, well, everybody... People talk about Civil War a lot. Um, I don't know about that. I You know, I, I think that's a lot of hyperbole. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, it's a different world than it used to be. It could happen. I certainly hope not, because I don't think when people are wishing for civil war, I'm not sure they know what they're actually wishing for. Uh, let's see. The shorter the video, the more... Oh, okay, here we get into some of these. All right. The time to wake up. This has been planned for... Yeah, it sure has. been planned for a long time. They've been working on it for a long time. I'll give you an example of that. And thank you, James Shoemaker, for bringing that up. I'll give you an example of that. It wasn't too many years ago that we, as the gun owners, were using, we're, we couldn't have any effect on a federal level because of President Obama, so we were having great effect on a state level. The problem is that as, as individual working folks like me, I'm just a working stiff like you, I'm sure, we don't pay attention to the local elections for dog catcher or school board or whatever. But the liberals and progressives and anti-American, anti-folks, they do. And so they get elected to those posts, and then they move up to the next one, and they move up to the next one. And that person who started out as a low-level politician ends up governor of the state. How do you think Gavin Newsom got there? That's exactly what he did. He started a local election and gradually moved up, and he, now he's governor of the state, and he's thinking about running for president, talking about running for president in 2024. Boy, wouldn't that be a disaster? So it's important that we pay attention to those people. All right, I promise you. Here we go. I got a cough. Uh, let's see. How do I do this? <coughs> All right, so if you're watching, you're worried that I was going to give you the flu. There you go. I didn't. Let's see. Uh, there is some good news, though. The southern states, Alabama, and, well, of course. Yes, absolutely. I agree. There's a lot of good news out there. I don't want to paint the picture that there isn't good news. There's lots of good news. We are winning in a lot of areas. You just don't see it in the mainstream media because they don't want you to know. In fact, that's an interesting thing. My son made a comment the other day, and he said, Dad, if you want to find anything that isn't the mainstream media telling you how to think, and you want to search on Google or any big search engine for it, you got to go 10, 8, 10, 12 pages down before it shows up. And he's right. So how does that affect the folks who don't bother to go to that effort? Now, Nick, he goes to that effort, and he studies his stuff out. But he's a rare millennial. A lot of them don't. They just take whatever's fed them in the first page or the first six listings or something. I don't use Google anymore. I use DuckDuckGo, but I'm not sure. I don't know if it's any different. All right, uh, Jacob S. says, the shorter the video, the more likely to watch and less live, and you have time. That I, I, I believe that, Jacob. The problem is that, that while that is true in many respects, people will still watch and watch a Colonel Nut and Fancy 45-minute long video or hour-long video. People will still watch Hickok 45 ramble on. I'm not picking on Hickok. I like him, to be honest with you, and I like his videos. But they'll listen to him ramble on for 30 or 40 minutes. I know because I have. So I'm not so sure that that's an absolute. I think it is, it is true on a general basis. But if you want the information, then you have to stick with the video long enough to get the information. There's no easy way to do it. There's no easy way to get it. Here, we're trying to make it as easy as possible by gathering the information, getting the people together, and publishing it so all you have to do, or all anyone has to do, is actually sit through the video or listen to the podcast. You don't have to spend the hours and days and weeks we spent gathering the time, getting the thing scheduled, producing the video, and all that. All you can do is watch it. So I don't know how to make it easier. And the problem is the information is so... Uh, in depth that you can't do it in a short video unless you break it into multiple videos. Well, I've tried that. And here's the problem with that. The first one people will watch. Part two, part three, part four, you get a diminishing return on each one. And as you get to basically part two, you're going to get one third or one fifth of the audience you got in part one because they just don't want to watch the rest of it. So those, those are the things that we're facing here. Um, YouTube is scalping credits. I read that one earlier. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. 
People don't want to donate to NRA because they do uh, because people don't want to donate. Where, where to go? I lost it. Give me back. Give me that back. Uh, it moved on me. Let's see. I lost it. People. Oh, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Edward Jimenez says people don't want to donate to the NRA because all they do is compromise, but never really fight like GOA. There's a difference, and um, I'm not going to try to go into it here, but it was very enlightening in the interviews that I did on why NRA does things the way they do them. There's actually a reason for that, and when you know what the reason is, which is going to take longer than I, – I couldn't explain it as well as Rick did, but if you are – if you wouldn't mind, I would say go and listen to that podcast I referenced because he goes through that. And then later, Chuck Michelle actually goes through that. So there are actually some reasons why they do that, uh, in part because they there are other organizations that don't. So each organization has strengths and weaknesses, and rather than duplicate effort, they tend to put their effort where they, where they have a specialty or a capability, and NRA does the same thing. But I, I agree with you to a degree. Right now, I'm not giving NRA money because I, don't, I think Wayne LaPierre needs to resign. I don't want to pay for $20,000 suits or, or big you know, $10 million homes or whatever. That's my issue. But you know, that may change as well. I don't know. But right now, they are struggling, and there's lots of reasons why. Much of it, I think, is damage that's self-inflicted. But I do encourage you to listen to that podcast. There's a lot of information there that you may not know. I know I didn't, and I really try to stay on top of it. So I would urge you to listen to that if you, if you have time. And you can listen to it a little at a time, or you can listen to it on your favorite podcast player while you're on your way to work or while you're, while you're on your way home. Uh, just go on Spotify or iHeart or whatever your podcast player is and look for the Gun Guy TV Firearms podcast. You'll find it there. Info is great. Thank you so very much. Uh, oh, yeah, Walter Smith was not notified. Well, Walter, I'm glad you found it. Uh, let's see. Oh, when you saw the SHOT Show video, you thought it was my Patreon. No, it, it isn't. Um, it's just a, uh, it's a podcast I put up there for everyone. It is also on Patreon, but I put it up there for everyone. Maybe that's, maybe I need a better thumbnail. That could be it. I did change the thumbnail but afterwards, but maybe I needed to have done that to begin with. So thank you for that. That actually helps a lot. Uh, let's see. Greetings from San Francisco Bay Area. Greetings to you too. By the way, we have a lot of really solid Second Amendment supporters in the San Francisco Bay Area. People think that everybody in San Francisco is a nut, and that's not true. There are a lot of very fine people that live there, and uh, some of them are big supporters of the Second Amendment. And I'm grateful for each and every one, and that includes you. So thank you for commenting there. Uh, let's see. NRA is doing, uh, uh, what is the NRA doing to help fight this? And what can I do to, st to stop the trend? Well, again, uh, Rick Travis goes through that in great detail as does in the, in the, um, podcast I'm going to release on the 20th. And I'll put a video version of that on YouTube as well. And the other video platforms, uh, Chuck Michelle goes through that in great detail. So you'll know exactly what they're doing and where their money is going and why they're doing what they're doing. So it's, it's a, it, it, first of all, it's a fabulous question. Unfortunately, it's not a question that has a brief answer. <laughs> and so there's no way I can answer it. And frankly, if I tried to answer it off the top of my head, I wouldn't do it justice. Where Chuck is brilliant, first of all, and he can, and he answers it in English. And so I, I urge you to listen to the one that I just did. And then pay it, you know, uh, keep your eye out for the one that's coming out. It'll be posted on the 20th as well. Uh, let's see. Problem they need. Whoops. Boy, this thing skips ahead. Lots of thumbs up. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, when we win this battle in California, the other states will, not, will have to fight it. Well, okay. People think it's not possible to win the battle in California. Excuse me. I need a drink of my tea. Yes, I'm drinking tea. That should surprise the tar out of you. My wife drinks tea. I'm a coffee guy myself. But when you you got a cold, you you know I've I've now eaten more chicken soup and drank more uh, healthy tea with honey in it than I've ever consumed in my entire lifetime. I think, and I think it's done me some good actually. So I'm really grateful. Fortunately, my wife takes very good care of me. I, I married her. Uh, a long time ago, and I love her more today than I did the day I married her. She is my favorite person on the planet, and I'm very grateful to have her as my wife. Uh, she's a gift from God, and she's also taken really good care of me and of my son, our son, uh, during this time, so I'm, I'm grateful for that too. Uh, let's see. 
old 45 does ramble. Yes, he does. Yeah, old 45 rambles, and I love him. You're talking about Hickok? Yeah, he does. But I like him, actually. I like Hickok 45 a lot. He's different than me, but that's good, right? I mean, I I hope I'm different than him. I try to be. And I ramble, frankly. I'm a half Italian guy who, you know, if you tie my hands behind my back, I can't talk. Uh, So I get it. Let's see. I live in Texas. And uh, yeah, well, there you go. Red flag law has been introduced in Texas. Now, honestly, if you bet most people, uh, John, that's John Stiles. If you bet, John, if you bet most people that that would ever happen in Texas, they would have bet against you and, uh, and they'd have lost. And I would have hoped it wasn't going to happen, but I was fairly sure that that stuff was coming your way, and I'm really sorry to hear it. But it is exactly, I'm going to admit it, it is exactly these people moving from the other states and coming to these free states and trying to turn them into what they left. It's, it's, a, it's almost a mental, it's, it's almost a, a psychological disease they have. They leave things that they hate and then turn the new place into what they hate and then leave and then ruin the next one. And I, I don't know, it, it's, it's like a... Um, it's like a mental disorder or something. I, I, don't, I can't figure it out. Uh, if we tax ammo like we do cigarettes, then no one will buy them. Well, that's, yeah, that's the, uh, the theory, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you, Gray Eagle, for, uh, for that little contribution. That was very nice of you. Uh, do both, I do both the NRA and GOA. I do too. I'm a life member of both. And, uh, but the NRA will not get any more money. I will be happy to donate money to NRA again once Wayne LaPierre has retired uh, or his salary has been cut dramatically because I, I just really object to these incredible salaries these people make, which is nuts. I mean, I, I, I'm a working man. I, I've got, you can't see them, but I've got calluses on my hands. I'm a working man. I, I'm, you know, I try to stay in decent shape because I work for a living. I started out in the masonry business as a kid because my stepdad was a block and brick mason, stone mason. Uh, so I've always worked for a living. And, you know, when you're talking about working people and then you got some guy who's running an organization like that and he's pulling down a couple of million dollars a year and you go, wait a minute, what? And I'm donating my hard-earned money from working my, breaking my back work into that? Uh, no. And so I object to that strenuously. And I suspect I'm not alone. Uh, But I, you know, but am I a fan of the NRA? Absolutely. Do I support NRA? Yes. Will I send them money at the moment? No, because I think the money's better spent elsewhere. I certainly will send it to CRPA though. And I'll certainly send it to gun owners of California and gun owners of America and the second amendment foundation and so on. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, Edward. Edward Jimenez says he will definitely take time to watch the video. I, I really appreciate that, Edward. Thank you. Michael Bloomberg has got more money than, than he knows what to do with, and he's spending it all over the place. All right, let's talk about Michael Bloomberg for here a second. I got to cough again. My opinion. So if you're watching and you're worried about the mask, here we go. <coughs> okay, perhaps I'm being over the top with that, but it, it cracked me up. What can I say? All right. Michael Bloomberg has more money than he knows what to do with and more money than arguably he is capable of spending in his lifetime, even if he was 25 years old, which he's not. Uh, and so he can burn money at an incredible rate, and, and, and gun-owning, gun-supporting organizations, 2A organizations, cannot match that. It's impossible. What Bloomberg doesn't have is he doesn't have people who are passionate about Bloomberg. He has people he can pay to do things for him. Sure. You got lots of money to pay people, but there's a difference between being paid to do something and being passionate about it. What the second amendment has is passionate people and you are one of them, or you wouldn't be sitting through this, listening to me ramble on. This is one of the points that Rick Travis made is they don't really need money. They need money because lawsuits cost a lot of money. And they actually explained what the costs of the lawsuits are and how much they cost and why they cost that much and how much money gets burnt on these things and how many lawsuits there are going on right now. Those podcasts are just a wealth of information. They really are. It's why we did them. And the audio is very, very clear for you. So it'll be really good listening, I think. But one point he made was that what, what Bloomberg cannot match is the passion and the people. We have that. He doesn't have that. We have that. And people will tell Rick on a regular basis, I just don't have the time. I'm working. I got this. I got that. I got the kids. Okay, well, my wife and I work. I own it. We own a small business, and I run it. And then she also takes care of the finances, works with the bookkeeper and the accountant and like that. Plus, she's a speech and language pathologist. She works in the school, which she's getting ready to rotate out to a different job now, but she's still going to be working. We have uh, still have a, a kids at home. 
We have grown, but we also have kids at home. And we're active in our church, and I've, we've got two little rental properties as part of my retirement that I have to manage and fix because I can't pay people to fix them, so I have to go fix them. I'm driving an old Ford truck. My wife's driving an old Ford car. So we're regular people, and yet somehow I can manage to find the time to do this. When this is not what I do for a living. So if I can find the number of hours I put into this to do this and invest my time, the rest of us can all find one hour to donate our time to a Second Amendment organization of our choice. And that's all they need. There are millions of us. There will be thousands of people that watch this live stream either today or after it's recorded and replayed. If every last one of us donated one hour a month, we would overwhelm Michael Bloomberg's financial power. He wouldn't be able to outdo us. He wouldn't be able to keep up. We'd wipe the floor with him. That's all we have to do. Vote, 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 and donate an hour a month. That's it. And if you got an extra 10 bucks, yeah, throw that in there too. It's not as hard <clears throat> as we make it seem. All right, somebody said, I actually watched the video. Anyway, I'll get this cool right here. Uh, let's see. I actually watched the video about uh, what you know, celebrities thought about gun control. Okay. I got it. Okay. Uh, Scott, uh, Scott, uh, Wayne needs to go. Yes, Scott. I agree with you hundred percent. Let's see. Uh, where was, was the NRA on Labor Day? Uh, I, again, I don't know. I can't, I don't keep track of everything they do. Uh, I do know they helped out quite a bit in Virginia and did spend some money there and rallied a lot of people in Virginia, if that's what you're referring to. Um, and they didn't get any credit for having done it, but they did. They did. They did. Uh, 119 people watching this video, but only eight people have liked it. Well, okay. That's, you know, they have to figure out. Sometimes I, I don't pay a lot of attention to the like, don't like thing. Um, some people disliked the video that I, when I was explaining, I was sick. And I know some folks got offended by that, but my son said, well, they probably disliked it because they didn't want to like it because it made it seem like they liked the fact that you were sick. So they disliked it because they didn't like the fact that you were sick. So I don't pay a lot of attention to those. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to get more likes than dislikes because it moves the video up in the in the uh, search engine part of YouTube, which is good. But other than that, I don't pay a lot of attention to that. Hot lemon tea and a short bourbon. <laughs> Boy, I can't argue with that. You're right. I'm more of an Irish whiskey guy myself. But I don't think I've had uh, alcohol of that type since I was in my 20s. It probably knocked me out for a week. Holy smoke, John Stiles, thank you very much. That was very nice of you, N nice of you to do that. Uh, okay, it finally went through the super chat. There you go. That was very nice. Um, I don't expect people to do that, by the way. It's very nice when you do, but certainly I'm not trying to extract money from you. Uh, Joel, what about reloading in California instead of buying new ammo? Okay, here's the deal with reloading right now. And people are going to say, you're letting out the secret. It's not a secret. Sooner or later, California is going to make reloading components part of this regulation stuff. Okay, but right now, reloading components are not regulated at all. So you can go online and you can order a powder, primer, shot uh, for your shotgun or wads for your shotgun or bullets for your rifle or whatever. You can, you can order brass. You can have it shipped to your house. Or you can go down to your local gun store and buy it. And then you can assemble the ammunition and load it yourself. That's what I do because it's not regulated. Now, so that at the moment, that's totally, completely, utterly legal. Uh, likewise, if you want to go over to the neighboring state and you want to buy it there because it's less expensive and you don't have to pay the, the, uh, the sales tax. I try to buy things. If, if I can possibly, if I'm in Arizona and I can possibly buy something in Arizona and not buy it in California, I'll buy it in Arizona and bring it home with me and throw it in the back of the truck because I don't want to give California the sales tax money. I'd rather give it to Arizona. I'm just I guess I'm just uh, contrary that way, <laughs> or rebellious or something. But I don't go buy things illegally and transfer, transfer them across the state because they'd put me out of business and I'd be hosed. But if I can do it legally, I do. So if you live close to a border and you want to go across the state and buy your powder and shot and, or bullets or whatever and do it, and bring, you can do that. Now, do I think California will eventually regulate that? Yes. Have they done it so far? No. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see how some Supreme Court uh, decisions and circuit decisions land. And I, I think a lot of this stuff is going to rest upon that. Whether any of this stuff is actually legal is going to depend on what the Supreme Court does in a number of cases that are queued up to be heard by them, one of which is actually being heard by them, uh, which is uh, fantastic. And that's something, by the way, that again, Rick 
addressed in that podcast and Chuck Michelle addressed in detail in the one that will follow on the 20th. So I do urge you to listen to both of those. Uh, let's see. The other thing I have mentioned a number of times is if you wish to order ammo and have it shipped to you or go to a neighboring state and buy it, you can, if you wish, get a California certificate of eligibility. You have to get a live scan for it. It's a California certificate of eligibility to possess a firearm. You have to get a live scan and you get the form from the California Department of Justice website. And then get yourself a Curio and Relic FFL license. I think it's an 03 FFL. And if you have those two things, then you can order ammunition and have it shipped to your home. Or you can go out of state and buy it and bring it back. Just make sure you've got those things with you. And my understanding is that that is entirely legal. You might want to check that with the California Rifle and Pistol Association to verify it. But that is my, my understanding. Uh, let's see. In San Francisco, a lady named Deanna L. is running against Nancy. There's a few people running against uh, Nancy, wacky, crazy Nancy Pelosi. And hopefully one of them wins. I don't know who's good or who's not at this point. But I'm trying to figure it out. And I actually am going to try to figure out which those are, and if I can get them on the show, I'll do it for you. The question is whether Deanna, well, okay, that's going into that conversation. Uh, boy, I don't know. I hope I didn't skip anybody here. I may have. If I did, please forgive me. This is what happens when you don't have a producer because I don't spend money on that kind of stuff. I try to put the money back into other things for the show. Uh, please remove that video of the guy with a gun in the park. The guy with the gun in the park. Well, first of all, no, I'm not going to remove any videos that I posted. If they're up there, they're up there. But I'm also not sure which video you're talking about. Uh, so, no, I won't remove the video. If it's up there and it offends you, I apologize for that. Don't watch it. Uh, but, no, I will not remove it. Um, I know people get mad at me about videos once in a while, but that's, that's kind of the way it goes. All right, my hat is off to you and the people in California. I live in a free state. Uh, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that, Dexter. I really do. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, don't worry about the YouTube likes and dislike things. I don't worry about that. I reload myself in Maryland. Good for you. I have been reloading and handloading since uh, God's dog is a pup, I think. Uh, let's see. Please remove the video. Okay, that's the same, same guy. Um, I'm, I'm in Arizona. Well, uh, Andrew, I'm right there with you. I'm not in Arizona, but we do have a business location in Arizona, and I'm concerned about what's happening there. Uh, and again, the same thing, Pete, please remove the video. Okay. So you can stop doing that. S S S S I've read it. I'm not going to remove the video. So people ask me to remove videos all the time. I don't do it. Uh, I post them. They're posted it, like it or not. It is what it is. Uh, and he's still going on about that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Thank you very much, Wyatt. That's a very nice thing to say. He said, I'm awesome. I don't feel like I'm awesome. Uh, I feel like I'm sick. <laughs> but thank you very much. Uh, what is my everyday carry? I assume that's what you're asking me, Dexter. On a regular basis, I did a video on this, but on a regular basis, I'm generally carrying one of two guns. I'm either carrying a, a uh, Taurus Model 85 38 Special that I've had for a long time. It's got crimson trace laser grips on it. And I painted the sights with fluorescent sights paint, and I love that thing. Uh, and in fact, I actually like it better than some of the Smith and Wessons. Now I'm going to get a lot of Smith and Wesson people who are going to give me heat about that, but it's a personal preference thing. I do like Smiths as well, and I have a number of them, but I, I really like that gun. It, it's a great pocket pistol when I have cargo shorts on and in San Diego County, it's often hot and I'm wearing t-shirt cargo shorts and flip flops or sneakers or whatever. If I'm not carrying that, I'm generally carrying my Smith and Wesson M and P nine millimeter. It also has a crimson trace laser grip on it or laser thing on it. And occasionally, very rarely, uh, do I carry a, um, a Springfield Armory uh, XD40 subcompact. But that's just because it's bulky, so I don't carry it very often. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I, gosh darn it. I almost got that guy sick, didn't I? <coughs> there you go. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think he's referring to the open carry with AR pistol okay yeah all right now i know what video you're talking about no i'm not going to take it down people don't like that video because they feel like it makes gun owners look bad well i agree it does and so it's up there as a don't do this in my opinion uh, the fact that i take it down doesn't mean that the information is not going to be out there and that video is going to be out there someplace else so taking it down is not something i'm going to do i made some points about it i think were very valid some people disagree okay that's fine it's kind of like I, I made a video that I don't particularly prefer, 
as my personal pistol, I don't prefer the Beretta 92 FS. It's a great gun. I just don't prefer it. And I gave my reasons why. And oh my gosh, talk about hate mail I've gotten over that. People just can't stand the fact that you don't like something that they like. Uh, maybe he's disguised as Michael Bloomberg. That's funny. Uh, let's see. I don't have a lot of information on SB 1625 uh, in Arizona other than I think that's the one I was just sharing about, is it? It is, and that's the one that I was sharing about earlier, which is the second, I think it's the second go-around for that, where they're trying it a second time. And here's the article, I'll, I'll show it to you again, uh, if I can get over there, hang on a second. Here's the article that appeared, you can find out more information on that bill at The Truth About Guns. So there's the article for you. And, and I believe I've already put the link in the description to the live stream, but the article does describe the fact that under this bill, all semi-automatic rifles that take detachable magazines would become assault weapons. And then it also affects some other guns because there's also a large, what they call a large capacity magazine ban. So there's more detail or more detail or however you want to say it. Uh, what do I know? In that article, and you'll find the link in the description, I'm pretty sure. If it isn't there, as soon as we're done here, I'll make sure that I do that for you. Okay. Well, you know, my wife has a Glock 43. Dexter, and it is an absolutely terrific gun. Or actually, she had, she have a 42 or 43. I don't know. Anyway, but uh, they're great guns, and uh, those are outstanding. Good for you. Great choice. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's did that. I, you, somebody carries a Taurus as well. Uh, good for you. Loads of, loads of bacon. Uh, great to see you on. on <laughs> yeah, well, great to see. I, I thought you know it's funny, man. I thought you said great to see you alive. <laughs> it says great to see you on the live. Hope the flu recovery is continuing. It is absolutely. I'm getting better. I'm on the mend, which I'm very grateful for. I am also alive, as far as I know. That's funny. Uh, stand by your convictions. So I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I, uh, you know, I'm not going to abandon the Lord. He's never abandoned me. Uh, and besides, I've always been that contrary guy that if you want to try to force me to do something, I won't do it because I'm an American. You know, Americans are kind of built that way. We, we have an independent streak about us, and that's one of the things I love about Americans. We're independent, and we want to be, and we don't need to be ruled by some nanny state government. I don't want to be told what to do by some politician somewhere who doesn't know who I am. If I want to drink a big soda, I want to drink it. I don't want some little miniature little New Yorker to tell me I can't do it or any of those things, or even a big one for that matter. Uh, let's see. Inherited a thirty eight Special 14. That's a great gun. Uh, Robert, that's a terrific gun. Good for you. Let's see, Joel. We know you are stand. Well, thank you very much. I, 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 I didn't know you knew that, but I'm very grateful that you would consider me a stand stand up guy. It's very nice of you. Uh, let's see. I think how much? How long have I gone here? I don't want to burn up more of your time. I, I got a few more minutes. Let me go through a few more of these because I don't want to. I don't want to waste your time. Uh, any news about the New York law in the Supreme Court? Yes. <laughs> and I know I keep saying, listen to that podcast because he talks a lot about that. And there's some great detail on that in the one that's coming up on the 20th. And it's, it, it's, it's so in-depth that I wouldn't do it justice here. But it's good news. It's very good news. So I encourage you to listen to that and then also listen to the one with Chuck Michelle because I, that's the first time I've ever met Chuck Michelle. Now, I, I gave him a lot of grief about his jacket, which was a beautiful jacket, by the way, but I teased him about it. But I got to tell you, that is one sharp individual. And after having spent a little time with him and Rick and Sam, both of whom, Rick and Sam, I have tremendous respect for, and having spent some time talking with Chuck Michelle, I cannot tell you how impressed I am with that man. He is the right man to be fighting this battle, and he's exactly the right guy, and he knows what he's talking about. So I urge you to listen to that. Um, he's a terrific attorney and very, very bright, and uh, he's exactly the right dude to be doing it. Okay, and that's the New York gun law. Yes, uh, there's lots of news there. So I truly enjoy watching your video. Thank you very much. It's very nice of you. Um, Mojave, I didn't know that. Mojave County, Arizona is now a Second Amendment sanctuary. Bullhead City, Arizona is now a Second Amendment sanctuary. Y Yavapai County as well. Uh, boy, if we could just get Maricopa County to do it, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. You know, that's getting that's becoming liberal central over there. But hopefully Yuma County will do it. I love it if they do as well. Boy, I hope that just continues to roll. Way to go, Arizona. That's, uh, that's awesome. I, I'm very encouraged by this whole Second Amendment sanctuary thing. Uh, the worst one we've found is new. Okay. 
Oh, okay. So they're just talking about um, uh, Nebraska bundling a bunch of stuff with suicide prevention. That's how they squeeze this stuff through. Wintertime, I carry a Ruger 1911 45 ACP. I got to tell you, I love 1911s. I also love a bunch of other guns too. So if you're a Glock person, I like those too. I mean, it, but I, I carried a 1911 for, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. So uh, I like them a lot. And people are going to say, oh, you're a 1911 fanboy. Yeah. Yeah, actually I am. Uh, sucks having flu uh, cold. Somebody, a lot, okay, a lot of people have, have suggested that I get a flu shot. I do every year. And then a lot of people have said, don't get a flu shot. If you get a flu shot, you'll get the flu. They're testing on you. And I'm not a, okay. And I, I, I really appreciate the concern. Thank you very much. But I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. I, I can tell you that I used to get the flu pretty regularly. And then I started getting the flu shot. And I don't get the flu anymore. I haven't had one for years. And I hardly ever get sick. So for me, it has been very positive. And I, I understand not everybody has the same results. Uh, but I'm just not, a, I'm not a conspiracy theory, uh, theory guy. They work really well for books and novels and TV shows and movies like that. But I find that most of the time in real life, they're a bunch of baloney. Not always, not always, but a bunch of times they are. Uh, let's see. Somebody likes a CZ. I love the CZ 75 as well, by the way, Kathleen. Uh, CZ makes great guns. I'm right there with you. Um, let's see, Joel, you got to do more podcasts in the future. I, I am trying to it's a lot of it is just time and space and place and then i'm getting old i'm you know i'm in my 60s i'm not a 25 year old cat anymore so i can't go with the same kind of speed and everything else that other people do i just can't do it anymore so i have to um piano would be nice too i do not play the piano although we do have one and i took piano lessons as a kid i do love playing my guitar very poorly as i might add but i do i do like playing it uh, let's see. I don't play it well, but uh, and people run from the house whenever I try. But there you are. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bob, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Bob Van Dyce just uh, contributed a little bit. That was very nice of you. Uh, let's see. What am I finding? Let's see. Are you, uh, any updates on California gun laws? Yes. And I'm, I keep referring to these podcasts. But yes, in the podcast that I published a couple of videos ago, uh, with, with an interview with Rick Travis on updates for California laws. He went into great detail with it, and that is available on all of the uh, video platforms. It's just like two videos ago, and then it's also available on your favorite podcast player, so you can you can listen to the whole thing. I didn't, I didn't put any of it on Patreon. I did put it on Patreon, but I put the whole thing out there for you because it was too vital to, uh, to have any of it be excluded. Don't get a flu shot, not necessary. That's what people tell me. Well, I think I just talked about that. Uh, okay, so don't get one. I'm, I, I got one. No flu ever and never had a shot. Well, I've had uh, the flu a number of times as a younger guy. I let it go. I didn't take care of myself. I ended up with pneumonia twice and bronchitis about half a dozen times. So I don't play anymore or, or get political about it. I just go get a flu shot and it helps me a lot. Uh, take, yeah, I've been doing the zinc thing. Thank you very much. And I'm doing much better. Uh, I will be attending the annual TSRA, Texas State Rifle Association, to push for Sanctuary 2A. Good for you, John. Well done. Uh, I've never had the flu. We did that again. Okay, thank you for taking the time of day to, to do this. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to watch it. Uh, you know, it's amazing to me that people do that to this day. I'm not that entertaining or interesting, so it's just amazing to me that people bother to watch these things. But you do, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Uh, make a video. What are the available guns that we can buy in California? I saw some new, well, that doesn't require a video that requires a web search and printing out the list. Um, and it would be a darn short list and a darn short video. Here's the deal with the, uh, the list in California and I'll explain it as best I can. Here we go. Hold on. <coughs> I'm doing better now. I, I didn't forget the mask. Uh, okay, the roster in California is just an, a, a strong attempt by the California government to make it as difficult to own a handgun as possible and a difficult to own tech, a new technology as possible. However, you are not, it's not illegal for you to own an off-roster handgun. It's illegal for you to buy a, one new from a dealer. You can buy one from someone else if you wish. 
My wife has a Glock 43 that we bought from a friend who had purchased it for his wife, and she didn't like it. He's a law enforcement officer, so he had it, I don't know, for a, a year or whatever. She didn't like it. And we were at SHOT Show, and I mentioned I'd like to have one. And he said, well, I got one I'll sell you. Because he already had one. She didn't like it, so he sold it to my wife. And it was legal to do that in the state of California, and it's legal for her to own. She simply couldn't purchase it new from a dealer. So that creates all kinds of problems, but it does avail you of the ability to get one. You just have to do it in that fashion. You have to get it from somebody who already owns it and buy it through a private party sale. Now, is the roster in court? Yes, it absolutely is. People ask that question all the time. Why aren't we suing on these things? Okay, well, again, podcast I just posted and the one that's going to be posted on the 20th is going to answer those questions in detail. The fact is every single anti-gun law in the state of California is now working its way through court. You want me to say it again? <laughs> Every single anti-gun law in the state of California is right now working its way through court. And Chuck Michelle will explain a lot of that, a lot of that for you. That is a great interview. And I, I look so much forward to having those three gentlemen on my show as often as I possibly can. And Chuck was very nice. He said he would come back on the show again. Uh, let's see. What are we doing here? Let's see if I can, I'm almost caught up. Uh, get better. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. I was told the California attorneys at LEOs aren't required to physically show you a search warrant before entering your house. Is that true? I don't know. But I don't think so. I think that's a bald-faced lie. I think they have to have the warrant in possession, and they have to hand you a copy of it. That's my understanding. So here's the way to avoid that. Don't answer the door. If it's a knock and talk... And you look out to your little peephole or you got a camera or something, you see cops standing out there, don't answer them. Then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but I would check on that. I, my understanding is, in fact, I will check on that if I think about it. I've got a bunch of law enforcement buddies, I'll ask them. But my understanding is, no, they can't do that. And most of these things, when they show up to ask you questions, the knock and talk thing, they don't have a warrant and couldn't get one. And the reason why they're knocking on your door is because they can't get one. They're hoping that you'll just let them in. And people do. And uh, they end up going to jail over it. So don't do that. Let's see. I'm doing better. No, you're not. You're, you'll, you'll be stone dead in a moment. <laughs> well, hopefully not until after this is over. And then if I croak, it's not a big deal. I've got lights, lots of life insurance. There you go. <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, this guy is Devin. Okay, so David Peters, uh, Peterson says, I'm Devin Nunez's neighbor here in Tulare County. Trump County, thanks for a great channel. Uh, a shout out to, and I'm doing this without my glasses, so forgive me, rank and field weapons range. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here, my home away from home. Good for you. Rank, rank and field weapons range. I'll say it again. How do we donate? A, 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 how do we donate one hour? Oh, well, just contact. Okay, contact the organization you want to donate to and ask them. Hey, I, I want to donate an hour of my time once a month. What do you need me to do? Oh, trust me, they'll love you. They'll come up with things for you to do. And maybe that's making phone calls or maybe that's showing up at a, at a at manning a booth to sign up members or sign up new people or get the word out or pass out flyers or whatever. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. Trust me, they're not going to have any trouble finding something to do. Just contact them and ask them, how can I help? I have an hour to donate once a month. What can I help? They'll just fall in love with you. Uh, and I really appreciate you asking. California law that makes it illegal. Okay. Can we repeal the California law that makes it illegal for a paramilitary organization to train with weapons if it engages in instruction or training in the guerrilla warfare or sabotage? I got to be honest with you, Brian, didn't even know there was such a law. I don't know the answer to that. That's an interesting question. I didn't even know that law existed. You just educated me. So I don't know. Um, that is a great question for you to pose to uh, CRPA because they probably know it's there. Uh, or call Sam Paredes at uh, Gun Owners of... Uh, of California, he probably knows as well. He's been around a long time, knows his stuff. Cal Guns is suing in front of Scott. Well, I know they are. Cal Guns is awesome. There's a guy, there's another one. I, I don't know why I forgot to mention them. Uh, the Firearms Policy Coalition is another one, and so on. Um, let's see. And if you want to go local in San Diego County, there's uh, San Diego County Gun Owners. It's a great little organization here locally. It's however you want to donate. Donate your time. Donate a little bit of money if you got an extra five bucks or ten bucks. Every penny helps, but time really helps a lot. Uh, what, uh, what's this? Did you stop over at Miramar? I'm not asking, I'm not sure what you're asking me. 
shooting Soquel. So if you can clarify that, I'll happily answer the question, but I'm not sure what you're asking me. Uh, I'll pray for her health. And, okay. Oh, or, or maybe you're, this is some people chatting with each other. I apologize. I'm in the middle of somebody else's conversation here. Um, okay. I think I got through them all. Looks like it. Super. Wow. And just in time too. How cool is that? Well, listen, thank you so very much for all that you do and for uh, supporting me the way that you do. I really, um, I, I could not do this without you and, uh, frankly, I wouldn't want to try. So thank you so very much for all of your support. Thank you for putting up with me. If you're still with me after an hour of this, you're amazing. Have a wonderful week and wherever you go, whatever you do, please be safe.